Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mahir and I hope you've uh, had perfect winter days. The project we're going to work on has a winter and Christmas atmosphere uh, and it involves a lot of aspects from modeling to uh, managing objects, editing objects, creating materials, adjusting lights and cameras and also uh, adding snow to uh, surfaces and rendering settings and even uh, creating animations. I've listed the keyframes below so you can easily uh, find the specific topics. And we're working with 3D Studio Max and V-Ray and Chaos Vantage in this project. So let's get started with the project. Okay, after opening 3D Studio Max, I started by drawing a box uh, from the Create menu and Standard Primitives. So I choose the box option and provide its lengths and widths, uh, for example, 2 meters by 10 meters. Now I drew the first box with a height of uh, uh, 15 centimeters, representing the uh, ground level, for example. So the next part I'm sketching is for the building structure. And the last part uh, is for the uh, street space. So uh, I'll draw three simple volumes uh, to begin the work. And the next step involves importing the buildings uh, like objects uh, into the project for use as a project's background. So the first is that I group the imported objects and I think I need a copy of it. So I hold down uh, shift and move it uh, using the move tool to create a copy. I bring the objects close using the snap. And for example, I uh, consider the middle shop for the next uh, objects. So I align it with the center of the volumes, mirror the next object for a variety, and uh, bring it closer again to the uh, initial volume. So in this stage, I press Alt and Q to uh, enter isolate uh, mode. I select the right shop, go to the edit poly, detach the shop's glass for uh, easier access to the objects inside. And then uh, I uh, select the glass, detach it, and move it down, for example, 10 meters down. So for uh, better access to the objects inside, uh, I use uh, another edit poly on the volume, selecting the unnecessary volumes and uh, start to delete them. So great. Now my work is ready in terms of the background. And at this stage, I see that my initial volumes are uh, small. So I select them, go to the edit poly and make them uh, larger. In the next step, I need to set a camera. To set a camera, I go to the camera menu, then V-Ray and choose physical camera. I set the camera, set the target, and now I'm going to fine tune its setting. So I come to the viewport viewport menu, select the two viewport layout, assign the left window to the camera and the right window to my uh, working space. Uh, so at the same time, I can control the effects on the left window. So the first step is to adjust the render frame. I go to render setup, then the output set, uh, section and uh, consider a number for the width and height, for example, uh, 9020 by 1080. So I think the proportion is not very suitable, so I can either increase the height or adjust the uh, image aspect. For example, I can set the image aspect to 1.4 to fine tune the image proportions. I lock it and continue with my work. Okay, perfect. Now the next step is to align the camera with the shop's glass. I use a snap and uh, select the center of the shop's glass. So additionally, uh, I use the target of the camera and uh, perform the same process to match it with the uh, shop's glass. Okay, so perfect. Uh, okay, another thing uh, I can do is uh, uh, to check the uh, camera from the left side but you can also uh, select the camera target, uh, move it slightly higher, and so. And another crucial task is to adjust the camera height. So first of all, I set the camera height almost to zero and move it 1.6 meter higher, approximately uh, standard eye level. So 
I think it's fine. The next step is to increase the field of view to see a wider uh, range. And finally, I uh, select the tilt and shift section of the camera settings, choose automatic vertical tilt and hit guess horizontal tilt to complete all the camera settings from a perspective view. Great. So the next part involves importing additional objects. In this section, I import a, a car object into my work. The first thing to do after importing the object is to group it. I adjust its height relative to the street. So, uh, and at the same time, I check if it is, uh, its placement uh, is correct within the camera view. I add the next object, which is the uh, second car. I perform the same step for the second car object. Ultimately, having two views makes it really easy to uh, for me to preview the output. Okay, perfect. So now the next step is to model a curve. I go back to the box tool, uh, drag a volume there, and assign a small value. For example, uh, zero point one or zero point two meter. So. After adjusting the uh, position and height, I increase the uh, height by, for example, two centimeters. So I think, uh, let's say 70 centimeters. Uh, I think that's fine. So two centimeters over the uh, pavement. Another task is to increase, increase the number of segments for better effect. For instance, um, 62 or even more and uh, these segments can represent the lines between the blocks so another thing to do is to provide some distance between the segments I select one of the segments uh, with edit poly choose ring and it automatically select all those segments the next step is to use the extrude in the extrude section giving it a bit of uh, extrusion inward while at the same time providing some distance between the segments. Uh, now test uh, until you achieve the uh, desired result and adjust the distance between the blocks. After finishing the settings, you can add a chamfer modifier uh, to the uh, model box. This modifier ensures that the edges of uh, the work are not too sharp and uh, become smoother. So I adjust it, for example, by increasing the uh, amount. And finally, I consider it in uh, the uh, radial mode. I think thinking that is uh, uh, suitable now. OK, I think that's fine. So very good. So I have modeled the curve. I started with a simple box eventually. I applied the edit poly and chamfer modifier. So the next step is to add another object. I add uh, decorative or ornamental objects. And then I want these objects to be inside the shop, which I had uh, configured earlier. So I select uh, two volumes, uh, press Alt and Q uh, to isolate them. In the next step, I select all decorative objects and group them. So I need to roughly position them. However, I think my shop is uh, small, uh, but I have to check, especially its step. So I apply it poly to the shop again and try to make the shop larger. The depth of the shop needs to be increased so that I can place the objects inside. Okay, well. Um, I think it's it's going to be, I think it's suitable now, maybe a bit more, about uh, one meter, one meter more I need. Okay, so I believe it's appropriate for my work now and there is enough space for my objects. I roughly adjust the objects and later you can use a scale or move to ensure the objects fit well inside the shop. So I scale a bit more and I think uh, 
it's suitable now. Okay, I move the okay I move the volume outside to be able to uh, delete the extra parts of this uh, decorative space. So I open the group and adjust the necessary settings regarding the position or uh, objects or uh, additional objects. So, so for example, uh, these were extra and I removed them or uh, brought the decorative object closer to fit inside the shop space. I can either uh, delete the parts uh, I no longer need or select the volumes, go to edit poly and uh, for instance, uh, delete or move the vertex uh, so that nothing is uh, outside the uh, shop. So work on this part carefully uh, so that it doesn't uh, cause any issues. And uh, I believe all the necessary objects are now uh, inside the shop. So when my work is done, I select the group again and close it. Okay, very good. Now I need to select the material for the light stripes. I open the, uh, so I open the group and uh, open the group and press M on the keyboard to uh, activate the material editor. So, okay, so you can pick the material, just click on the light stripes to select the material for the lights and increase its, increase its power. So for now, I set it to 135 to do a test render and see if it's suitable or not. I close the group and exit the uh, isolate mode. So the next part uh, is completing the materials. I consider really basic materials because in the future, I uh, know that the snow will uh, cover these surfaces and detail texture will not, would, would not be visible. So I assign materials very basically uh, with the help of uh, Vray MTL and many basics uh, without uh, any texture. I know that detail textures uh, will not be will not play a significant role in my work. So after assigning materials, I add objects again. Uh, I add winter and uh, uh, snowy trees to match the atmosphere of my work. So I perform the initial settings in terms of size, rotation, and also placement from the uh, camera perspective. So I make sure to check the uh, camera section from the left window where I can see the scene being uh, created. I add another object, I add people, and at the same time, I pay attention to the camera. So it's really important. And then I add a second person trying to uh, convey a scene and mood suitable for the winter atmosphere and ultimately uh, emphasizing them on my uh, shop. It's really important. The next step is to add an HDRI. In this part, I add a V-Ray dome light and assign, a, assign an HDRI map to, uh, to it from the map section. I drag and drop it into the material, material editor to adjust its settings later if needed. In the next step, you easily uh, go to the render setup section and we take an IPR uh, from the render test to uh, see how it looks. Well, now the scene is really dark because intensity of my HDR is low. I increase the HDR light, which is the V-Ray Dome. For example, it's currently at 10. Let's try 40 or uh, um, even more, I think. 80 uh, is uh, uh, suitable. At this stage, you need to play uh, around a bit to achieve the desired result. I open the decorative group to have access to the uh, interior lights. If you have limited uh, selections from the top, it will only uh, select the lights. Now individually select the lights, increase their intensity to achieve the desired result. So I work a bit on the intensity of the dome light to make it brighter. You can also add V-Ray lights. So for instance, uh, I need to uh, 
add a sphere light for the side shops. So from the light section, from the light section, I select the sphere light and it add it to the scene. Adjust its settings and make sure their position are inside the uh, surrounding shops. If you notice, the surrounding shops are illuminated in the uh, test render. And it's fine. So I consider another light for the main shop using a plain light and making it uh, larger. I position it above, above, hiding it in a way that it's not visible from the outside while it's still uh, observing its effect on the left. So, and at the same time, you can adjust the uh, uh, intensity or uh, color and uh, other settings uh, from the right side. Now, uh, I edit its intensity a bit uh, to see its effect. So I make a copy of it and uh, rotate it and I place it uh, below the uh, cast light from the bottom. So we have one light from above and one light uh, from below for this scene. And the next step is to work a bit more on the camera. I focus on exposure and once uh, mm -hmm. Once the work is done, I try to uh, ensure the combination of the camera, HDRI, and uh, internal lights uh, in my scene is uh, well balanced. So it's really important. So I hope uh, you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. Uh, if you like it, please hit the like button. It really helps me continue this journey. Thank you. And at this stage, the task is to prepare the base for the snow. So. I copy the boxes that I initially modeled and edit them, making them smaller uh, to cover the uh, desired area. So I don't need more uh, because it wouldn't be visible within, uh, within the camera view. So uh, I apply edit poly again, make the volume smaller and raise it by about one centimeter. So the snow area for the street is roughly determined now. And I select the Snowflow plugin, which is used for creating snow. Then I choose Select Object and Ground. And finally, let it snow. Well, it easily generates the snow. In the next steps, I will perform some edits on this snow, but uh, it's created as a, a separate object. It's really good. So. Now I go to the uh, next step and select the uh, uh, curves. So copy it and repeat the same process. First, I copied it, moved it, and uh, selected the remaining volume, applied uh, edit poly, and deleted the parts that are not uh, needed or not visible behind the cars so that the generated snow volume is not too much. Again, I select snow flue choose the volume and let it snow. I wait for my snow to be uh, created. Now, there are many settings in this plugin, but it's not too complex and it's easy to work with. So the good thing is that uh, you can edit the created object later. Now I take a test render to check uh, the work on the uh, street and the curb. Okay. And the next step, I want to adjust the snow on the walkway. I again make a copy of it, clone it, and move it slightly, about one centimeter higher to uh, avoid interference uh, with the lower volume. So I adjust the range, select the box, and uh, let it snow. Now I uh, choose a ground and finally let it snow to create the snow on that part uh, as well. So. I change the material name and now we have three objects uh, that are related to snow and we can work on them to uh, adjust the snow on each of them. Okay, it's fine. I'm doing a test render and it's okay. 
In the next step, I'm going to apply an edit poly to the building and select the sun shades area. So I will make a copy of it using shift control and move. So clone the clone to object and uh, treat it as a separate object. And I select the same plugin again, uh, Snowflow. I choose the new object and rename them true and uh, let it snow. Okay, finally snow is created for this part. I copy it easily and I do another test render. You can see how well the uh, snow has been created on the sunshade, uh, sunshade part of the uh, shops. So next I aim to do the same for the other surfaces. For example, another visible area is the uh, part in front of the windows. I select the stone part and let it snow. I uh, rename the material and ultimately snow is uh, created for that uh, part too. So the next part is the area with the cars uh, where I want to work on the snow. So I select some polygons with edit poly and use uh, grow until the desired area is selected. So in the Snowflow plugin, there is a part called selected faces and only the, the faces uh, you selected have uh, snow on them. So I select other uh, faces and uh, by the help of uh, grow in edit poly, I can easily expand the area. So after expanding it, I go back to the plugin where selected faces only is uh, checked and I press uh, let it is snow, I rename the material if needed, and again I see that the snow is easily created on the selected areas. I take another test render to see how it looks. Uh, I think it's fine. Now I'm going to edit it a bit more. So the next car is uh, done exactly the same way. I use edit poly again and select some faces to use uh, grow in the next step. So I do the same process. And uh, so with the help of Snowflow plugin, I select the uh, volume, selected faces only, is active. And now uh, I can adjust the uh, uh, depth with thickness. I think it's suitable. So I press let it snow. So the material is appropriate. And I see that the snow settings are easily adjusted for the uh, next subject. I complete other spaces from the same car at least, the ones visible in the camera. And I take another test render at this stage to see the uh, result. So now if you pay attention, there are two snow covered cars. It's on all my surfaces. I will refine the work in the next stage, but you can use edit poly to select the snow. And you can start from the paint section to uh, push and pull. So you can manually select some areas and bring them down or up with the edit poly modifier and push, uh, and push and pull in the paint deformation section. Okay, I performed uh, the same procedure for this section, uh, meaning the first car, and you can even apply the same method to the street so you can edit the part where the car tires are or the part uh, where there is no car to bring the snow higher. Finally, I take another test render to see how the changes have occurred. Okay, that's fine. I add two other lights uh, to the shop. So one I add to the right one and one to the left uh, with the instance copy. So. Finally, I take another test render to see how the uh, changes have occurred. I feel that the space needs a bit more randomness in the snow uh, underground. So I go back to the edit poly and paint the formation using push and pull. I edit the work a bit to achieve the desired result. So the next part involves animation. You can use a, a timeline for animation. I set the end uh, time to 250, meaning it starts from zero to 250. If you press N in the timeline, um, uh, so it turns red, bring the control to the right and move the camera around. 
I want a simple camera movement, just getting closer to my shop. So now the next stage is to uh, output process using Chaos Vantage software, uh, which makes this task very easy. The software is uh, already active on my system. I select the camera, choose a frame from 0 to 250. Set the other parameters and very easily, uh, if you press start, it begins the animation from the scene uh, you were working on. Now okay, Chaos Vantage settings are more uh, detailed, but with a good graphic card, you can achieve the desired result. This is the output of the work done with uh, Chaos Vantage software. And uh, here is a single shot from the project that I'm uh, attaching here for you to see. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Uh, if you haven't liked it yet, please do so and share it with your friends uh, so that they can benefit too. And don't forget to uh, subscribe. Goodbye until the next video.